Now the 03 and 04 model, they come off pretty easily with the rubber ends. But if you have the plastic type, they can get to be pretty hard, especially in the colder weather. Um, you're better off if the engine's hot. And if you've had the, again, this style is easy, but the plastic one on the 2005 and up are harder. If you have that, I take my 24 inch pry bar, and I'll stick it behind it in this eyelet, and I'll pry it off. And that's how I do the other plastic one. And just the opposite, when I have the plastic one on a 2005 and up, I'll take it, my, the 24 inch pry, pry bar again, stick it in the eyelet, and push it on to reinstall it. That's only on the 2005 and up. So that, like I said, this one's different. I just want to show you and go over that. So in case you have the newer one and you're wondering how to do it. Now to loosen the fuel line, I'll take a 13 16 and 7 H wrench. Use a 7H on the on the inside. 13 16th on the outside. Break it loose. Now if you put a zip tie around this line, you won't have to chase your fitting here in a minute. So we just put a zip tie on here. That way this won't slide down the tube and I won't have to hunt for it in a few. Also using the same 24 inch pry bar, I take it and I stick it underneath here. And it's the exact right length to hold my hose down and get propped underneath the negative cable. So it goes from there. And the negative cable there holds it. Now that's holding it down for me. I stick a few rags underneath here to help absorb some of the excess fuel, but it has been leaking, so there's fuel all over the engine, so I'm not really worried about it. Not too much, at least. Now, these are Torx 27. The um, 25 works fine, whichever one you have. I've never had an issue using a 25, but they are 27s. I take them off with this, but I strongly recommend putting them on by hand. It is spring loaded, so I'm going to keep some pressure on it right now when I, um, as I remove the last bolt. get these kits, they're repackaged. I mean, this is a Ford. Well, it's being resold by Ford. But a lot of this stuff that you get, you can get as cheaper at International or it's just a repackaged International part. The reason why I'm saying that is sometimes these kits have more than what you need. Because this may service quite a few different International motors um, along with the Ford, um, the 7.3 that's in the Ford, the 6.0 early and late, which I'm going to cover here in a second. But the main things that we're going to get out of this that we're going to use, again, depending on the year, is the seat for the valve, especially this seal here, because that's what's common to go out. So we'll do that. And the reason why everybody calls it the Blue Spring Upgrade, we have that.
and the new plunger that we're going to replace. The best way to think of this is just has spring tensure holding this as a pop-off valve. The fuel pressure is pushing against this and once it reaches the desired pressure, usually around 45 or so, 50, it'll pop off and allow the fuel to return. Okay, we're going to replace the seat on this one. Again, this would be an 03, 04 style. I'll show you an 05 because on the 05 you won't have this option to replace that. So let's go ahead and pull this one out. We want to remove it and make sure we get all the pieces out of there. Remove the O-ring that's back here on the 0304 style. Check for any debris. I'm going to show you the 05 style. Okay, this is the 2005 6 7 style. If you notice when we remove this, we don't have the option to replace the seat. So if, you, if yours is this style, don't worry about not having a seat to replace, which actually makes it a lot easier for you. So I just wanted to show you both of them. This is be the 05, 06, and 07 style, all the way up to 2010 if it's an Econoline. Okay, when you get the kit, this is what's all going to come in it. It's up to you if you feel it necessary to remove and replace the housing. Um, you paid for it, obviously do it. I myself, I've never had issues with it. What we always have issues with is this O-ring here around the housing. And this, of course, is spring for the pressure. And I've had a few where the, uh, the seal has failed on there. So those are the main components I want to replace. because that's where we're going to get the benefits. The other ones that you see here, these O-rings, go on here when they're replaced. Okay, here I have the old housing mounted in the vise. Just take the old fitting off. And that's where you can see the O-rings that we're going to replace when we transfer it over to the new housing. We have the one here on the outside. And the larger one there. If you notice in the kit, The smaller one's green, not that it matters, but I just figured I'd point that out. So I'll go ahead and replace the O-rings and transfer it over to the new housing and install this seal. Okay, now when you're removing this, this is actually a little bleed orifice that's a metered, um, that's fixed inside. It's like a jet to let the air out. Try to take it off carefully. make sure this one's broke so we're going to have to clean it out inside there so let me show you what to do with that got a couple of options take the fuel filter out Try to push the pieces through. See if we can get them all pushed back out. Of course, you don't want anything to go inside of here. So we'll take it and we'll blow it this way. Same way with down here, making sure we don't have any pieces. Blow it outwards, not into the fuel bowl. Okay, here I have the new pieces with the O-rings on them, and I put some assembly lube on it. So hopefully we'll be able to push everything in by hand. We don't want to push and damage anything. Same way here with this top piece.
they get installed, both of them by hand. Install the new valve and spring. Set it inside of there. I'm going to move the rag so I don't get any more contamination. Okay, I have the new housing. I have the seal inside there and I used a little bit of assembly lube. You can use grease, Vaseline, whatever you have around the house. And I'm going to go ahead and install it. You want to make sure that your spring goes in this cavity where they have it made for it. It's not that big of a deal. Just watch, put the spring in there first and then line up where it seats, where it sits down inside here. So we'll go ahead and put the spring on, make sure it's in the right spot. Push it, hold it in with my thumb. Run this bolt down, but not tight with the ratchet. Okay. And put all the other bolts in. Again, I'm just running them down and not tightening them up. You can get it by hand. And now tighten up. The fitting here. Snug that up with the new seal on it. Get this started. And tighten up this one. Now we have higher fuel pressure, which will save our injectors.